Hi all, I appreciate you stopping to watch this video. This is the moon's rotation about its axis, as explained by teacups. Uh, in the video I'm going to reference a uh, central axis, that's this spout right here. And then uh, around the axis these teacups um, have this their own little axis, that's this steering wheel here. Uh, if you grab the steering wheel, uh, it locks the teacup upon its axis. Uh, if you're curious about any more of my thoughts on this particular subject, you can check out these four videos. Uh, as explained by tether balls, the rotation of the moon about its axis, as explained by bicycle pedals, uh, as explained by skydivers, and explained by hoverboards. So, uh, here's our guy sitting in the teacup ride. This is that central axis upon which the spout sits, and then uh, here's the teacup. Um, here's that uh, steering wheel I was referencing. This is what he grabs to lock the uh, teacup upon its axis. So, um, uh, as you can see right now, his hands are out, so the teacup is rotating freely about its axis. <clears throat> when he brings his hands in, he locks the teacup upon its axis uh, so that it has... Um, no mobility upon its axis, or better yet, uh, it would be a better example maybe even if he drilled uh, bolts into the floor of the teacup, um, thereby removing its axis. Either way, um, this is the way I chose to demonstrate it. So hands out, again, uh, rotating freely about its axis, hands in, locked upon its axis, um, and just right here, he kind of looked like uh, Goro from Mortal Kombat, so we're going to call him Goro from now on. Alright, so here he goes around the ride. He's going to take a quarter turn, uh, holding the steering wheel, locked in place on its axis. And uh, around he goes, and he's still looking at that uh, center spout. <clears throat> Another quarter turn, still looking at the center. Round and round he goes, locked upon his axis the whole time looking at the center of the ride. Okay, so now he's going to remove his hands from the uh, steering wheel. No longer locked upon the axis, so the teacup now can spin freely. So he's going to take a quarter turn here with uh, the teacup not locked upon its axis, and um, I chose to show it where he's facing this way, but really he could be facing any which way, right? That's kind of the whole point of the ride, um, is that uh, he could be facing any which way. Uh, so another quarter turn, still facing uh, that same way. Again, he could be facing any way. It doesn't matter. The whole point is he is not facing the center of the ride. So here he goes around and around. Um, and as you can see, because the teacup is not locked upon its axis, he could be facing any which way. So, um, as you can have probably imagined, I was referencing the center spout um, as the Earth. I want to make it clear that I'm not saying that the Earth itself is the center axis. I'm saying that the center axis of the Earth is the center axis. So, um... <clears throat> That is our center spout, and again, as you imagine, the teacup is our moon. So if you can imagine Goro sitting inside the moon, able to lock down on an imaginary uh, axis, um, that's, what, that's, uh, that's what I'm trying to demonstrate here. So, um, And the whole point of this is we always see the man on the moon, and the question is, why do we always see only one side of the moon when we see all sides of the moon? Uh, and this is demonstrating why that does not happen. So, Goro is not locked upon his axis, uh, he has not grabbed that center axis of the moon to lock it in place, and uh, the people on Earth are freaking out right now because they're seeing a side of the moon they've never seen before, um, and that's because the moon is not locked upon its axis. I also wanted to note that the Earth is still spinning. Uh, two different things can rotate on the same axis, and if you don't believe me, look no further than your uh, wristwatch. Uh, sorry, your wristwatch. Now, here we've got the, uh, the center axis, and around it, there are three different things rotating. Uh, all at different rates, but all upon the same center axis. So around and around Goro goes. <clears throat> so, um, 
some of you right now are saying, wait a second, uh, he could be facing that center the entire time, even if he's not locked upon his axis. And um, you're absolutely right, but really, what you're saying is that just by pure happenstance, by pure odds, that happens, and it happens every single time it goes around. Uh, that seems a little far-fetched to me, but what seems even more far-fetched is that this is fairly commonplace in the galaxy. In fact, we expect moons to do this as they lose their own energy. Um, and it's it's actually called tidal lock. And so uh, tidal lock is a very real thing. I know you can't see it, um, but it's just as real as if there was a steel bar sticking out from the earth into the moon. Uh, it's, it's very, very real. And um, so this happens all the time as moons lose their uh, own energy, especially big moons. Tidal lock happens. And so if the odds are infinitesimal that our moon would do that, how much even more infinitesimal is it that this is so commonplace in the galaxy? So uh, Goro is getting tired of that style of riding, so he wants to lock down the steering wheel. He's getting a little bit sick at this point, so he just wants to lock down the steering wheel and wait the rest of the ride out. So here he goes, going around the Earth, and uh, as you can see, the man on the moon is still facing the Earth. The Earth is still spinning. We're going to put a little man out there in the middle of the ocean uh, just to show that when the two um, kind of cross paths, he will in fact be looking at the man on the moon. Alright, and our ride is about to come to a stop. Goro had so much fun uh, showing that the moon in fact mimics the teacup that does not rotate upon its own axis. But he does not like spinny rides, so he's feeling super duper sick. And so it's time to end this video. Uh, I would like it if you went and watched my other videos on this subject, uh, as explained by tetherballs, as explained by bicycle pedals, as explained by skydivers. I have to thank a YouTube user for this uh, for this one. It's a great analogy. And then, um, as explained by hoverboards, this one might be my favorite because uh, every time I talk about this with somebody, they always use the same example of one person standing in a center and the other person. Uh, standing a few feet out from them and going around them the whole time facing the person in the inside and uh, This video was made to show why I Think that analogy is bunk and why it doesn't make sense and it's certainly not an apples to apples comparison uh, So if you'd watch any of those videos, I'd appreciate it. I love comments I especially love comments from really really smart people on both sides Yes, I realize that what I'm presenting here is not probably the uh, majority opinion online, but uh, that's what discussion is all about. So with that